Part four, there are no elements of order six. Now, if I had an element of order six, it would generate a cyclic subgroup of order six, and that subgroup would have two elements of order three, two elements of order six. So the two elements of order three correspond to a unique CeeLo3 subgroup in our cyclic subgroup. Because all CeeLo3 subgroups are conjugate to one another, that means we have at least 28 conjugates to our cyclic subgroup of order six, which means we have at least 56 elements of order six. Now, we can get a contradiction from that. We note 168 is equal to, we have 48 elements of order seven, 56 elements of order three, at least 56 elements of order six. That leaves room for precisely one CeeLo2 subgroup of order eight. Now, because that's unique, it has to be normal, and that's gonna contradict our assumption of symbol. So, there are no elements of order six. First consequence, that means the normalizer of our CeeLo3 subgroups are gonna be symmetric groups on three letters. So, if I have a subgroup of order six, if it's abelian, it's cyclic of order six, if it's not abelian, it's a permutation group on three letters. So, we have this. Second consequence, if I have an element of order three, then we know its centralizer is gonna have order three, which means the number of elements in its conjugacy class is 168 over three, which is 56. So the elements of order three form a single conjugacy class. Part five, let's consider our CeeLo2 subgroups. We'll choose one, we'll call it H sub eight. I'm gonna assume first that H sub eight's abelian. Now that means we have three possibilities, Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2, Z2 cross Z4, or Z mod eight. The way we proceed, we're gonna choose a subgroup. We're gonna let it act on the elements of order two in each of our groups. Now, first case, we have seven elements of order two. Second case, we have three. The last case, we have one. Now, in the first case, I'm gonna let H3 Okay, a CeeLo3 subgroup, act on our elements of order two by conjugation. So conjugation preserves orders of elements. So when I take a look at the orbits, the orbits have one or three elements in them. So I wanna ask, how many ways can I write seven as a sum of ones and threes? So I'll have three ways, either a sum of seven ones, a sum of four ones and a three, or a one and two threes. So each of these is gonna have at least an orbit with one element. How do we interpret that? Well, that means our H3 is gonna be in the centralizer of this element of order two, which means we're gonna have an element of order six. Now, we can't have that, so I can rule out the first case. For my second case, we have three elements of order two. Okay, instead I'm gonna to to use a CeeLo7 subgroup, so if I write three as a sum of ones and sevens, I can only do that as one plus one plus one. So using the same rationale as before, we're gonna be guaranteed an element of order 14, and we can't have that. So that rules out this case. For the Z mod eight, we only have one element of order two, so you could use an H3 or an H7. There's one orbit with one element. In this case, it's gonna guarantee an element of order 14. So we rule that out too. So, our CeeLo2 subgroups are gonna be non-abelian. Since H sub eight is non-abelian, it's isomorphic to either D sub eight, the symmetry group of the square, or the quaternion group. In either event, the order of the center is two, and if I have an element in the normalizer of H8, that element carries the center back into itself. So, if our normalizer had an element of either orders three or seven, we'd have to have elements of order six or 14, and we know that that can't happen. So that means the normalizer of H sub eight is H sub eight itself, and so we have the number of CeeLo2 subgroups is 21. Finally, part six, we show that H8 is isomorphic to D8. 
our first step is to compute the remaining conjugacy classes. So if I have an element of order four, then its centralizer will have four elements. See this? If that centralizer had an element of order three or seven, then that element's going to commute with the square of our original element, which is an element of order two. That guarantees an element of order six or 14, and we know that that can't happen. So that means the centralizer can be at most order eight. If we check with D8 or the quaternion group, we see that the centralizer of an element of order four is exactly four. Now, that means the conjugacy class for an element of order four is gonna have 42 elements in it. If we consider an element of order two, okay, let's suppose we're considering the element of order two, it's in the center of H8, then the order of its centralizer is gonna be equal to eight. Okay, again, if we had a three or a seven order element in there, we get our contradiction. So that's gonna mean the codice class for an element of order two, okay, in this case, it's gonna have 21 elements. Now, order seven elements, we have 48. Order three, we have 56. So we have 64 spaces left. I have 42, 21, and one more space for the identity element. So we've accounted for 168 elements. That means I have one conjugacy class for the elements of order four, one conjugacy class for the elements of order two. To show that H8 is isomorphic to D8, we'll assume that H8 is isomorphic to the quaternion group, then we get a contradiction by counting the cyclic subgroups of order four. Now, if I suppose the intersection of two distinct CELO2 subgroups is a cyclic subgroup of order four, then the element of order two in here is gonna be in the center of each of our CELO2s. So that'll mean the centralizer of that element is gonna be strictly greater than eight, and that'll contradict our previous result. So, that means the intersection of any CELO 2s can never be a cyclic subgroup of order four, and that makes them very easy to count now. So in a quaternion group, we have exactly three cyclic subgroups of order four, so I get all of them by multiplying by the number of CELO 2s, which is 21. So that means I have 63 subgroups cyclic of order four, but by counting the elements of order four, we're gonna have that there's only 21 of these. It's gonna be a contradiction. So we have that our CELO2 subgroups are all isomorphic to D8, the symmetries of the square. 